Hypertrophic fat cells, when full, reject insulin push and leak free fatty acids to avoid becoming necrotic. Dr. Ben Bickman. Insulin resistance starts in the fat cells. So when the fat cells fall, the rest of the body isn't far behind. So let's take a moment and explore the origins of insulin resistance at the fat cell. As people, as you, we may have two different individuals, two fellows who were roommates at university, and then they go on and get married, get desk jobs, and, and uh, you know, life settles down, if you will. As life settles down, the waistline starts to expand, and they're both gaining 10 pounds of fat per year, let's say, until they join each other for their 10-year reunion, and they're both morbidly obese. So in this case, these two men who appear to be gaining fat at the same rate could be gaining fat in different ways. And specifically, fat tissue expands either through hypertrophy or hyperplasia. In the case of hypertrophy, that of course is simply, and you all know this, this is when the individual cells themselves are getting bigger. There's no change in cell number, it's just the cell itself is expanding. In contrast with hyperplasia, it's when the cell number is changing. Cell size isn't much. This would be like fat cells that start to get a little big, before they ever get too big, they simply recruit new fat cells to help carry the energetic burden of storing ever more fat. Hypertrophy of the fat cell is not a good thing. That is a bad thing, metabolically speaking. Hyperplasia of the fat cell is metabolically a good thing. Now, to highlight the role of insulin in this process itself, here's a study that what they found here is that when at the sites of insulin injection in type 1 or type 2 diabetics, the fat cells, the adipocytes, have hypertrophied several times over normal size, upwards, you know, potentially four times or more. And at the whole body level, this can look something like this, where the reason, of course, we tell diabetics to rotate their injection sites is to prevent the insulin from inducing such obvious adipocyte hypertrophy, as we see here in these instances of consistent injection, either on the thighs in this woman or on the belly. When we have a fat cell becoming insulin resistant, and that is happening on the hypertrophic side. Insulin is always stimulating the uptake of fats from the blood. You know, specifically the, the intake of uh, activations of lipoprotein lipase and pulling lipids off of the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. So insulin is always stimulating the uptake of fats. Usually, however, insulin is inhibiting the breakdown. In other words, it's inhibiting lipolysis, and that's why I have you know, this sign here, in the hyperplastic fat cells, they maintain their insulin sensitivity. So insulin can always tell the fat cells to store the energy. In contrast, the hypertrophic fat cell cannot store anymore. So insulin is force feeding the fat cell more and more fat, and it's, uh, insulin would attempt to tell the fat cell to not let any of it go. The hypertrophic fat cell doesn't listen. It is now leaking free fatty acids, even though insulin is trying to tell it not to. We forgive the hypertrophic fat cell because we would contend that that is its efforts to not get so big that it reaches an unhealthy or even a dangerous level that it cannot sustain its own size and become, say, necrotic or something like that. Hypertrophic fat cells, when full, reject insulin push and leak free fatty acids to avoid becoming necrotic. Dr. Ben Bickman. Insulin resistance starts in the fat cells. When the fat cells fall, the rest of the body is not far behind. Let's take two fellows, graduate college at the same time. Life goes on. Let's say they gain about 10 pounds a year. They join each other at a 10 year college reunion. They're both obese, but they could be gaining fat in different ways. As fat tissue expands, it is either hypertrophy or hyperplasia. Hypertrophy, when individual cells are each getting bigger. Hyperplasia, the cell numbers increase. They recruit new cells to help carry energy burden. Hypertrophy of fat cell is not a good thing. Hyperplasia of fat cell is a good thing. In a study in diabetics, at the site of insulin injection, fat cells had hypertrophied 
several times the normal size. Dr. Bickman says, we tell diabetic patients to rotate injection sites to prevent this type of fat cell hypertrophy. Insulin resistance happens in fat cells that are hypertrophic. That's bad. Dr. Bickman says, insulin is always stimulating fat uptake from the blood, pulling lipids from the triglyceride-rich lipid proteins. Usually insulin is inhibiting fat breakdown, lipolysis. Hyperplasia fat cells maintain their insulin sensitivity, so insulin can always pull the fat cells to store the energy. In contrast, hypertrophic fat cell cannot receive any more fat. Insulin force feeds the cells. Fat cells begin leaking free fatty acids. Fat cells must leak excess fat to avoid becoming necrotic or dying. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. To access these annotations, go to doctorstotrust.com or see the description below this video's title.